Hello everyone and uh, welcome to uh, this webinar, this uh, marketing masterclass, why CPD should be part of your marketing strategy. Thanks very much indeed for, for joining us. This is uh, the next in our series of marketing masterclasses for manufacturers. Um, so we've got a great lineup of speakers today and I uh, hope you enjoy everything that we're going to talk about. So the focus of today, obviously, as the name would suggest, is CPD, Continuous Professional Development. And uh, it's obviously changed quite a bit with the landscape of everything that's happened in the last few months. But for architects and many other professions, it remains a, a mandatory requirement to keep up with CPD. And for manufacturers of products, it remains a really powerful and targeted route to market to be able to get in front of decision makers and uh, educate them and the, the wider market about your products. So those are the things that we're going to be focusing on today. Just to introduce uh, everyone that we've got on the call and who's going to be speaking. So uh, I'm Robin Cordy, I'm Marketing Director at NBS and I'm just going to kick things off. Uh, we're delighted to welcome Joni Tyler, who is Head of CPD at the RIBA. And we're also delighted to welcome Andy Civil from Working Titles, who is a CPD expert and will be sharing some of his insights on, on how to make the most of it. So what we're going to cover, we'll talk a little bit about CPD and marketing strategy and where that fits uh, for you as manufacturers. Joni's then going to give us some real um, detailed insights into, into winning with CPD, how the process works um, and what you need to do. Uh, and then Andy's going to cover a bit around getting started, so some practical advice around how to actually um, get going make it a success and, and put CPD into action. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a bit of a discussion around how CPD links to this wider specification process and, and what return on investment you might expect. Okay, so just in terms of housekeeping, we're, we're aiming for about an hour on the webinar, it shouldn't be any more. Everyone on the calls, uh, microphones are muted except the speakers, but you can uh, absolutely ask questions via the, the box on your screen and we'll, uh, we'll aim to make sure we, we pick up relevant questions after and get back to you. Okay, so without further ado, something I just wanted to explain up front for uh, anyone on the call who, who may not be sure or has maybe um, looked at CPD before and, and wondered how it all works between RIBA and NBS. Um, RIBA and NBS deliver the Reby CPD Providers Network as a partnership. So we're both on the call today. Um, NBS handles the kind of the, the, the marketing and the sales side of things uh, and looking after the customers and the RIBA is very much focused on delivery of the actual content and the network itself and the approval processes and those kind of things. And, and Joni will be explaining a little bit more about how that, that works in a moment. It's a long-standing partnership. Uh, we've got many, many um, customers who've been with us for a long time and some new ones as well. Um, and, uh, and it works very well. So that's kind of how things, things work at a top level. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, CPD fits into marketing strategy. Now, we're kind of using this theme on a lot of our marketing masterclasses. And the uh, the important point is, is here that for product manufacturers who are looking to, obviously the often the end goal of their marketing is to get their product specified. And our view is very much that to do this, you need to be integrating and, and using um, all the digital channels available to you to do that. And you need to be working them together to make sure that you are giving potential prospects and the people that you want to tell about your products the right information they need at the right time that they need it and through the channels where they where they are. So that means you need to look after your own channels. So things like your website uh, needs to be as good as possible, findable, easy to use, um, available through search engines. You need to be providing great quality digital content around what specifiers need um, and so social media. Um, but you also uh, need to be delivering uh, CPDs and digital product data as well. So CPD really fits into that mix of being, giving you a, a channel by which to educate and inform uh, your potential prospects and the people that, that you want to specify your products, uh, but doing it alongside part of a, a wider marketing strategy and making sure that your content themes and key messages and your kind of branding runs runs across through everything. So CPD, as I mentioned, is a is a key part of that. And we're going to touch on, on some of the other channels towards the end of the session as well. Um, just in terms of uh, how uh, important CPD is, and now this is um, from 2018, where we asked um, manufacturers who don't subscribe to the CPD network, whether they use CPD as part of their, their marketing plan. You can see there the growth over recent years. It really has um, increased in, in usage. Um, and that was nearly two years ago that we last asked that question. So 
Um, if you're not doing it, your competitors almost certainly are. Um, so you really need to be thinking about how you work that into your strategy. And to just give you, um, you know, a little flavour of obviously things have, have changed quite significantly in the last few months. And CPD is, is more relevant than ever in some ways to the changing climate. It's just people are doing their CPD slightly differently. So we're now in a situation where we've got mass remote working, uh, many in the construction industry working from home and working digitally. That in itself has increased the digitization of the industry. So people looking to consume their content and conduct their work through, via digital means. Um, there's no more meeting in hotels or face-to-face um, -face presentations for now. And of course, as well, there are new competency requirements coming in by the industry as well, which I know Joni's going to touch on within her presentation as well. So all of these are um, helping drive CPD forward and, and the way that we communicate and share those things. So that's it really from me in terms of, of setting things up and, and how CPD fits with the, with the wider marketing strategy. Uh, I'm going to come back on at the end and, uh, and kind of uh, loop that all back in and, and show you what you might expect in terms of um, what you might achieve. Um, but now I'm going to hand over to Joni, who's going to give you much more detail around how to actually, how the process works and how to win with CPD. Over to you, Joni. Hi, great. Thanks very much, Rob. And I'm looking forward to talking to all of you today. As Robin said, I'm Joni Tyler. And I'm head of CPD at the RIBA, the Royal Institute of British Architects. And I'm responsible for CPD policy, strategy, accreditation, and compliance. Um, at the RIBA. As Robin said, um, we work very, very closely and have for 25 years worked with NBS to deliver the CPD Providers Network. And I'm going to tell you a little bit today about how the Providers Network actually works and how you can use it to win with CPD. And we'll be um, at, um, ending the presentation today, as Robin said, with a little bit more about ROI and tying everything together. So last year, CPD providers, CPD Providers Network subscribers reached more than 40,000 delegates with more than 5,000 CPD events in the practice at lunchtime. Um, clearly, things have changed a little bit since um, lockdown, but what's significant is that, as I'll say a little bit later, is most CPD providers have actually pivoted to deliver online CPD. So whether it's face-to-face -face in a room with people or in a hotel room, which we very much hope is going to be the case again someday, or whether it's delivering live and remotely digitally or a combination or both, or, or many, many other ways in which you can deliver CPD. Um, what the CPD Providers Network is about is getting you in front of specifiers, getting you in front of delegates, getting you in front of construction um, um, professionals, allowing you to do things, um, passing your CPD assessments quickly, which the NBS team and the RIBI team will help you with, but also getting in front of specifiers equally swiftly, again, whether it's digitally or face-to-face, to maximize the return on investment as soon as possible and potentially have long-term relationships with construction specifiers and and getting specification sales in the end but also to talk very to talk about your product areas and to educate people about your products that's what the providers network is about so both the NBS and the RIBA teams are very keen for you to succeed at this, and we're here to guide and support you through this process with an emphasis um, on the clear and common standards and criteria necessary for a successful assessment as part of the CPD Providers Network. But a little bit about the RIBA first. Some of you may not be familiar with us. Um, we were founded in 1834 and were the, one of the oldest chartered professional bodies in the world. Architecture in the UK, as you may know, is a regulated profession. And um, we are based in Portland Place in the West End in Marlebone in London, and the new RIBA North in Liverpool in 11 English regional offices and the new offices in Sharjah and Shanghai. We represent 44,000 global members, 29,000 of whom are chartered and are required to adhere professional standards and the code of professional conduct, and thus a requirement to do CPD. And I'm guessing that amongst our audience today, there'll be lots of members of professional bodies, whether the construction professional bodies, PR, marketing, who also have to do CPD. Within REBA's mission and charter, we have a dual purpose, both public and professional. Hence, we're about advancing architecture as well as ensuring excellence in the profession. And some of the public work we do are architecture for all at Victoria and Albert Museum, exhibitions, lectures, debates, programs for children and families, and much more. 
But on the professional side, you as construction manufacturers are probably familiar with their toolkits, contrasts and publications, including, of course, the industry leading RIBA plan of work, which was just updated this year, or last year, rather. My focus here today, of course, though, is on the professional audiences and excellence in the profession and CPD and CPD providers network as very much a part of ensuring excellence in the profession. Um, our audiences are, of course, architects, practices and architecture students, but they're also the wider industry, clients and government. And as a part of this, the RIBA has a leadership role in the construction industry. So, for example, we've been at the table with government and industry for the past three and a bit years that have passed since the Grenfell Tower fire. And we played an active role in the changes in the industry that had developed since that since that fire and hence also in the way we assess and look at manufacturing a product related CPD. So those of you who are part of a professional body, a membership organization, know that standards are at the heart of any chartered professional body. And, and they very much help to ensure that professionals work competently, safely, and ethically. They're always underpinned by a code of professional conduct in which expectations, competencies, and behaviors are outlined. Chartered professionals, um, that's true in every profession, are required to be, abide by the code of conduct and to be competent to practice. And competence itself is no, said to be a combination of knowledge, skills, and experience cemented by CPD. The purpose of any code of conduct is to promote good conduct and best practice. It aims not only to uphold standards through discipline, but also to empower practitioners to reflect critically and to continually strive to improve their practice. And the RIBA code itself is underpinned by three principles, integrity, competence, and relationships. These are described in detail in the code, which you can find um, for public use on the RIBA website. Again, CPD is common amongst most profession and it is a mechanism for professional bodies like the RIBA to ensure that their members or registrants maintain those professional standards and competence. So as a professional body, standards underpin what we do, how we admit people as chartered members, how we conduct ourselves, what we expect of our members, and what we owe to the people who use, inhabit, work, live, and play in and procure architecture. CPD is one way in which these standards are manifested and carried out and, and probably the, the way that has the most impact on, on, on members of any profession. So offering, expecting and auditing CPD allows us to offer the tools, support and training people will need to maintain their, their chartered status, to pick up new skills, to meet their obligations and to demonstrate professionalism and crucially and to ensure safety, of course. So CPD obligations really exist to ensure competence. Um, people remain competent, maintain their competence. They either work safely, they are work um, in a matter in which they're capable of doing the right thing, that they are be, uh, up to date, make, take steps to make sure they're up to date all the time, and that the common standards underline everything that we expect from them, including in CPD. Now, RIBA is actually one of the first professional bodies in the world more than 20 years ago to require CPD of its members. And it actually predates the legal and medical professions in that. So all chartered members of the RIBA, people who are registered as architects and, and want to become chartered, i.e. they've done RIBA parts one, two, and three in architecture school, have to do the following things every single year. 35 hours at least of CPD, and 20 of those hours are from the 10 mandatory core CPD curriculum topics. Um, and parenthetically, I need to say that every piece of assessed material in CPD Providers Network is assigned at least one and possibly two or three um, core curriculum topics. So architects and designers, as the illustration says here, are always looking for CPD providers who can help deliver those topics. They also have to um, self-assess themselves self-assess what they've actually learned from any CPD activity and so they need to accumulate at least 100 points every year. Wherever possible, half their CPD should be structured. That means that it should be in a classroom 
excuse me, that means it should be in a classroom setting, whether that's face-to-face, -face, digital, or, or distance learning. By structured, we also mean somebody has actually given them um, aims and objectives, and everything in the provider's network is pretty much structured CPD. They're required to record their CPD online on our CPD recording platform, and our members are audited, and something that's um, new is that um, a, uh, pretty uniquely amongst professional bodies in the world, we are, will be auditing 100% of our members and non-compliance with doing CPD, or rather I should say non-compliance with providing that CPD record could be a disciplinary matter. And people who don't comply and don't do their CPD or rather show, refuse to show us the evidence that they've complied could be taken through the disciplinary route and they could be um, suspended or expelled from the organization. We take competence, particularly since Grenfell, and as you'll see in a minute, we take competence of our, um, reg our chartered members extremely seriously. Um, and it, um, it is a, a, a very much a life and death situation with CPD. Um, mo as I say, most professionals, particularly in professions in which your work impacts on the um, health, safety, well-being, financial well-being of, of clients or customers or patients will have to do CPD and architects are part of that as well. However, um, something that you are going to benefit from, um, well, as I said, CPD has been mandatory for the RIBA for more than 20 years for chartered members. Um, we are actually putting a new emphasis, a much um, greater emphasis on, on the mandatory competences, on verifiable experience, and on obligations um, over the next two years. And if you look at our website, and I think we can probably provide a link at some point, um, and look for the Way Ahead document, you can read about what the RIBA is doing to um, bring together the knowledge, skills, and experience required to respond to the challenges facing our world, society, and profession for both architecture students and for chartered architects. This new framework, which, which you can see right here, is going to signify a new direction for architectural education and CPD, and it's going to have a much greater emphasis on health and life safety, the climate emergency, and professional ethics. It's going to be phased in um, over the next two years, beginning from 2021. And um, we are going to, over the next couple of years, be conducting um, a series of workshops around the country and around the world digitally with architecture schools, architecture students, practices and practitioners and individuals and other stakeholders to put a little bit more meat on the bones of the proposal or the plan here. It's no longer a proposal, it's a plan um, to refine it a little bit and to perhaps fine tune it if we need to. Um, one thing I really need to pick up for, um, that is relevant for CPD providers is that um, we're continuing with what's been really great about CPD and what's unique about REBA CPD is the 10 topic REBA CPD core curriculum, which outlines the 10 key skills that um, chartered architects, that is architects who registered to practice in the UK, need to attain every year to maintain their status and maintain their confidence. But I also want to pick up on the fact that for the first time, um, members, RIBA members, are going to also, um, um, in addition to that, acquire mandatory competences to uh, obtain and maintain their chartered status. So those competences are going to be over health and life safety, climate literacy, ethical practice, and research skills. So what that's going to mean is that people will need to be obliged to um, do a mandatory CPD module online and do a test. Uh, and with the health and life safety test, it's going to be a, a series of, of around 500 questions in a question bank that are going to be randomly selected for people when they log on to do the test. Um, and if they don't do the test, they will not be able to maintain their current status. We're going to be following this with um, mandatory competencies, as I said, for ethical practice, for um, climate literacy, and for research skills. So really in response to um, the issues that the, have been arising since Grenfell, and with the climate challenge, which the RIBA has had a very strong and robust response to, we're helping people to ensure that they can work and practice safely, that they can take part in making um, uh, significant changes in um, 
response to climate crisis and that they're always going to work ethically, um, whether that's within the practice or, or from a global standpoint. So this is quite significant in terms of CPD amongst any professional body. And you as CPD providers or potential CPD providers will take part in this because you'll be able to help them attain the, not only the REBA CPD core curriculum, but, but um, give them CPD towards the maintainary competencies that they need to aim to and start again. But you'll also give them CPD to help them maintain um, and, uh, and attain the mandatory competences they need to attain and maintain their chartered status. So it's quite exciting. Um, it, it's quite um, significant and it, it's going to be a big change for people. I think the key part of it is, is that as part of this, it's also going to take into account verifiable experience, particularly when we're looking at something like specialist accreditation. So for example, if you want to work as a conservation architect, a principal designer, a lead designer, or designer of a higher risk residential building, you not only need to do the CPD to, to prove that you have the knowledge to be able to work in those specialist areas, but you'll need, need to be able to provide um, evidence of professional experience to show that you're a safe pair of hands for working in those specialist areas. So watch this space. And it'll be interesting to have conversations with you um, over the months uh, to see what you think of this. So we've set out the seriousness with which the RABI is taking confidence in CPD and architectural education. And as part of that, obviously, the CPD that we provide and that you as CPD providers deliver is a key part of that. RABA offers CPD in a number of ways. But there's absolutely no question that the biggest CPD product we've got, the one that has the greatest reach and the one that reaches the greatest number of people is the RABA CPD Providers Network. For those of you who don't know, as Robin and I have already been set, said, the CPD Providers Network is delivered by NBS and RABA, gives building product manufacturers the opportunity to provide education about the products to architects who are ready to learn, architects who need to learn, and architects who want your CPD. So, so effective is this method of uh, marketing and method of providing CPD that nearly 60% of architects do go on to specify one or more of a manufacturer's products after having undertaken their reassess CPD in the provider's network. So how it works is that all content in CPD providers network, and I think right now we have 1500 pieces of reassess CPD, it's all accredited by the RABA against specific written, clear, we hope, standards and requirements. Um, providers Network subscribers can um, have their um, CPD presentations, their CPD materials and all kinds of content reviewed and accredited by the RABA. Um, when the material is approved, you're entitled to use the Reba CPD Providers Network logo, which has something like an 85% recognition rate across the industry. So it offers great visibility and, and huge recognition, uh, especially in the UK, but increasingly globally. Um, REBA approved CPD is also worth double learning points for REBA chartered members, providing a distinct advantage over non-approved CPD members. And you can deliver your CPD however you want. You can offer your CPD as seminars, conferences, articles, websites, factory tours, courses, books, and so on. However people can learn, However, you, you might be able to retweak the content that you've got to deliver something truly educational. We can assess it. If somebody can learn, we can assess it for you. Um, as I mentioned, over 85% of REBA chartered members and 75% of non-members are familiar with CPD Providers Network logo and prefer, prefer it to any other CPD series. And this, I think, is, is due to the assurance of quality CPD content which is assessed and proved by us, by the recognition that you get, by the visibility that you get as a result, and by a, a, an established and trusted pair of brands in NBS and the RABA. So just some key notes about that. Um, it is a key part of our offer, REBA CPD high standards, accurate information on your product, clarity of specification intelligence. It offers reliable material, top quality content. It gives you that recognition and visibility. 
and you are uh, benefit from the 25 year track record of this 25 um, year old quarter of a century old business um, delivering CPD between the RIBA and between NBS. And some of the benefits are listed here. Um, I've mentioned them already, but certainly obviously the biggest one is the assessment of your CPD material and helping you to achieve the approval by the support standards, guidance, feedback and customer services we offer. The visibility we get by allowing you to um, use the logos once your CPD material is approved, the listing on rebacpd.com, exclusive events and invitations in which we share insights with you exclusively as network subscribers. Ultimately though, you're using all of this, you're leveraging all of this, the REBA reach and reputation, the NBS reach and reputation, the intelligence and knowledge, and your approved CPD material, which is of given great visibility, by having access to specifiers, by um, developing long-term relationships with them, and by the specification sales, which um, come about as a result of this. And as the illustration says, you're building awareness about your products and brand through education, which leads to interest from specifiers and specification sales. So how it works is that, as I mentioned, we provide these standards um, for the providers network. Um, if you were to subscribe, say you're a new subscriber, you're a prospect, you're interested, interested in joining, once you subscribe, you have a number of assessment allocations to use over the year or over the two years of your membership. Um, you create the CPD content yourself using the RIBA standards and guidance as a, as a um, guide, guide for you to create that content to deliver REB approved CPD. The team at um, Portland Place, or rather I should say the team that's working remotely from various locations in London at the moment, assess it for you. Once it's approved, it's marketed by yourselves and by us. As I mentioned, the main marketing mechanism is rebacpd.com. You have REBA approved content. The specifiers will directly request it from you. They may contact you directly or they may contact you through rebacpd.com you will deliver your, your CPD to specifiers for free. Traditionally in the past, it's always been, mostly been a lunchtime seminar in the practice um, or at a hotel or at a Reba CPD roadshow. At the moment, um, that's largely being done digitally to great acclaim from both CPD providers and from RABA members. So who wins? Well, members, RABA members and other construction specifiers win because they're getting free high quality CPD you get specifications and long-term relationships and the RIBA and other professional bodies get members who are maintaining their competence through high quality CPD, which leads to safe and assured specifications. So what we do in the team, um, specifically at the RIBA, um, as Robin outlined, the um, NBS um, are responsible for sales and marketing and events, and the REBA team is responsible for the assessment process and the assessments. So what we do is stand, set the standards for assessments and approval and, and work with you. We, um, I have had several, um, half a dozen emails today from CPD providers um, in which me and myself or my team have provided guidance and support. We have clear processes for getting from A to Z from um, asking the initial questions about your CPD, submitting your material, getting it assessed and, and um, getting it approved and listed. And, we try to be as clear as possible throughout that process. We do listen to your ideas. Um, we're available to, on email or phone or Teams meetings increasingly at the moment to listen to what you want to do, to listen to the story that you want to tell about your product and to tell how you can tell that story, but using REBA, the REBA um, requirements and standards to get there. We process your CPD submission feedback and report very clearly to you, keep you updated at, at all times and approve your material when it meets our standards. Presuming it meets our standards and then it's um, you're free then to deliver CPD at that point. So what are we looking for in your CPD? Well, the key thing, particularly since the Grenfell Tower fire, we've always been looking for um, information that leads to safe specifications, but increasingly over the last few years, that's become more important than ever. So we want to help you to enable safe and informed specifications for your sake, um, for your product's sake, and for the end user's sake. 
um, we're looking for a clear picture of your product area that tells your story of your product, but in a generic and non-commercial way. We're looking for something that's actually genuine education, educationally sound, and not sales oriented. Obviously, what you're doing with this is a subtle form of marketing to lead to sales, but it's not sales itself. It, it's it's a generic, a genuine piece of CPD that teaches people something they need to know about how to specify or use your product or product innovations. We're looking for something that meets our standards and requirements, which are published and which are given to you on subscribing. Something that allows us to be secure and use and affixing our logo to something. And remember, our logo has been in place since 1834. So we have a great duty of care to ensure that we can be secure in approving your material to use our logo. But we're looking for something that tells your story, perhaps in an interesting way. And I realize interesting is in the eye of beholder. But I really want to emphasize that you are telling your story in your own way against our standards and requirements. So the two things kind of work together in your, for your benefit. As I said, we are looking for non-commercial content, but I do want to emphasize that it does not mean it's not product related. In CPD Providers Network CPD, you're talking about your product in an educational framework. So I guess what I would say is that you've got freedom within a framework. You're talking about your story, how you pr pr approach that story, how you deliver that story, what you concentrate on, what you emphasize, the exact story you want to tell is entirely up to you, as long as meet our specific um, technical standards and requirements. Um, as I mentioned, uh, have mentioned quite a number of times, we uh, want to ensure that's non-commercial. So you've probably all heard the thing about no brand names um, and that sort of thing, and that's absolutely true. But the things that you're allowed are the company history at the beginning, up to four slides case histories throughout that are related to your product as education, making educationally valid points, your own photos and illustrations, logos on your slides, your contact details at the end of the seminar, handouts and cards, and of course you can follow up with, with, with um, um, specifiers at the end. Um, so while it's non-commercial content within the body of the presentation and offering genuine CPD, it's about your product area and it's helping people to understand your product, understand something new or interesting or key or vital about your product and about the specification of your product. So these things do coexist very well. They've coexisted for 25 years. It works really well. And I think you can probably see examples of it on rebacpd.com website. As I mentioned earlier, we can assess almost anything that people can learn from. So um, I'm normally, most providers want to do face-to-face -face seminars. That's absolutely fine because they want to be in the office with people. They want to ha have people feel the samples. They want to ask questions, talk about projects. Increasingly, um, we're seeing digital content as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So what can we assess? Anything that's digital, anything that's a face-to-face, -face, um, anything people can read. Um, factor tours and so forth and, and showroom tours, um, events or anything that you, you think of that people can learn from, we can probably assess, have a conversation with us at first. If there's a question mark in your mind, you think you might have some content that can be turned into CPD or that, that could be CPD um, in itself. For example, lots of companies have thought leadership blogs on their websites give us a call or send us an email. Maybe we can have a Teams meeting and talk to you about your ideas, just to make sure that um, we're all talking, on, uh, we're on the same wavelength. We can give you support and ideas. We're seeing some really, really interesting things right now. As I mentioned, we um, have um, a couple of factory tours and um, showroom tours, um, virtual ones that have been assessed and submitted, which is interesting. A couple companies now have submitted podcasts. A few companies have um, submitted their thought leadership blogs as well from their websites. So while you will probably want to create a piece of 40 minute face-to-face -face or digital CPD from scratch, equally you can have a look at what kind of intellectual content you have in your resources and your website to see what can be turned into CPD that the REBA team can assess and approve for you. Before we move on, something that's just occurred to me. Um, 
the most interesting thing I've seen in an extremely long time is a lighting company who have just um, had submitted and had approved a seminar that is actually a murder mystery um, based on the Star Trek, Star Wars Death Star, um, a murder mystery in the form of um, education about a new British standard on emergency lighting. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to get them a lot of attention. But here's the key thing. It, it's something fun and, and new and innovative, an innovative way of approaching CBD content, very serious CBD content, in a way that's probably enjoy, really enjoyable for the end user. So it's 2999 the great innovators in digital CBD. So have a look and see what they're doing. But but what but what I'm why I'm telling you this is that um, you can think creatively about your content and still come up with something that can be assessed and accredited against our standards. I mentioned we have standards and processes in place to get you there. I'm not going to go through these in in um, great detail, but they're written. They're in the CPD network assessment submission form, which you'll have a copy of, and also when you join we've created an online learning module that sets out everything that you need to know and do to be able to have reassess content um it does ensure i think non-commercial content safe specifications and it does create trust in your cpd material um, it offers clear common guidelines i think it's as transparent and clear as we can be but we can always improve um, and offers consistent advice and messages and confidence in the cpd material so have a look at this and have a look at the online learning module when you subscribe before you submit your first piece of CPD to see what it is we're looking for and the key points that we want to look for. The things we look for other than um, the non-commercial is that the um, seven required specification essentials are addressed that all your claims are supported and statistics you might cite are evidence. Your research should be cited as well. We look for ambiguities and elisions um, quite um, uh, as well. We look for ambiguities and elisions as well. Just if it's something we don't understand, that something's unclear to us, it may be unclear to an audience as well. And we want to make sure that the product can be legally placed in the UK. But as I mentioned before, um, really CPD Providers Network is about freedom and a framework. We've got a fairly rigorous framework for our expectations, but how you get there, what you concentrate on, how you tell your story, how you illustrate it, how you make it stand out, what your messages are, the themes and content, all that and more is entirely up to you. You all have different aspirations, ideas, methods, and objectives. You have your own brand identities, corporate strategies, aesthetics, and your own ideas and strengths. And as the types of technology increase and as companies get stricter in brand representation, CPD delivery is always going to vary. So we provide the minimum standard content approval framework. You provide the expertise in your area about your product. You provide the content, the visuals and looks. We give the content framework. How you get there and how you present it is up to you. And you could do something as, as gorgeous and eye-catching as this Ultra Fabrics Power of Color CPD, which um, is not really so much, as I recall, a, 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 a seminar about how to specify the product, but it was really more, um, again, I mentioned before, a thought leadership piece on um, how color, um, as it says here, can evoke feelings and create moods. Very interesting and very enjoyable. So once your CPD is, is um, put together, assessed and approved and listed, you're good to go. You can deliver your CPD to specifiers, um, whether it's face-to-face -face or digitally increasingly, and certainly at the moment digitally as well. Digital CPD delivery is a necessary complement at the moment to face-to-face, -face, and I think it's always going to have a place now, even when we go back to the days of being able to deliver in the architect's practice at lunchtime, at live CPD roadshows, at showrooms, or wherever. Previously, it was always difficult to get um, CPD providers to want to commit to digital CPD delivery because I think that creating a piece of static on-demand content could be quite time consuming, a little expensive, and you had to have a great technical expertise to do it. But now with digital meeting and live events platforms like this one, like Microsoft Teams, Facebook events, and so forth, you can deliver your existing piece of 
PowerPoint or Prezi presentation, you can deliver it yourself over these meeting and events platforms. So since lockdown at the beginning of March, we've been working, the NBS and REBA teams have been working extremely hard with the existing CPD providers to help them to pivot to digital live CPD delivery. Um, so at, you can still do on-demand CPD, but if you're doing the live remote CPD, it, it's giving you um, a wider reach. It's enabling the same dialogue you might have over a lunchtime sandwich in the practice. You can still talk to people, still answer questions, you can still talk about projects afterwards. Um, it certainly does save on travel and on PRET orders. Um, hundreds of CPD providers have now pivoted to the digital CPD delivery. But the key thing is, it doesn't mean, as people are working remotely at the moment, they could be anywhere, they could be anywhere around the country, around the world. Um, you might find that you don't have to do it at lunchtime. People are a lot more open to being able to consume their CPD at any time of the day, whether it's breakfast, lunch, late afternoon. CPD providers, you might find yourself delivering to one person to an entire practice, or you might offer um, an open invitation to lots of people at the same time. But that really means that you're getting much wider um, mix of people and, and, and broadening your international reach as well. If you've got a piece of digital CPD, you could deliver it to anyone, anywhere, provided that person's interested in the product and, and interested in consuming the CPD. What I'm finding is that um, you can either do, as I mentioned, on demand, available 24 seven, as this will be, or as I mentioned, which is probably the most popular mechanism, the live and remote using Teams, Zoom, GoToMeeting or so forth. You can use your existing approved CPD or you might want to prepare an all new CPD. Um, we have been in seeing, as I mentioned earlier, also an increase in um, podcasts, blogs, workshops, factory tours, virtual showroom or factory visits as well. So make yourself available to digitally, either whether it's your traditional 40 minute PowerPoint with questions at the end or in a variety of other ways as well. CPD team and the account team are all here to um, guide you through this and to listen to your ideas. But I really would emphasize that even when things go back to normal, I think this is going to be an, a major, major enhancement to what you do. And it's really going to extend your reach and reputation and make it, make it possible for you to reach many, many more specifiers at, at a more convenient time for you and for them as well. And it's all listed here on rebocpd.com. Um, and we are also, um, at the moment, promoting those CPD providers who are, who are delivering live and remotely as well. I'm doing a LinkedIn post every day for a different CPD provider just to encourage this, this um, pivoting and bring it to the attention of the um, built environment um, generally as well. And it does work. And I just had this email just the other day from one of our CPD providers. Um, it says it all right here. He's now delivered remote Reba CPD content to more than 2000 architects all across the UK and worldwide without having to do any business miles or to buy a single sandwich. It does work extremely well. I um, have a look at rebacpd.com to see who's doing it. But I would really encourage it um, right now because um, our members, as I explained earlier on the presentation, um, do have to do their CPD. We haven't relaxed the rules of CPD at all because of lockdown. In fact, we've increased them um, and we've made the maintenance of competence more important than ever. So they're looking for high quality CPD. They're looking for something they consume easily um, at the lunch. Um, at their home office or wherever it is they're working, and they do want to have their dialogues with you. Delta Membranes are a really great example of, of somebody who's done something. Um, as I mentioned, I'm promoting, um, we at NBS and Reba are promoting these on um, LinkedIn every day, which is a key thing. If you want us to promote your digital CPD, remember to send us really, really, really great illustration to accompany the, the listing. Um, this one has had more than a thousand views and lots of like, likes on the LinkedIn. It's a great social media friendly image, a clear offer. They also offer multiple platform choices and um, issue open invitations for anybody in the built environment, particularly architecture, obviously, um, and engineering to be able to attend their CPD. They offer it on, on both Zoom and on um, Teams. So 
it's always a, it's a good tip I think to re to keep in mind that you want to make it available on more than one platform for the user preference. In summary, really, then, having heard all that, I think that hopefully we've demonstrated that CPD Providers Network can help you to tell your story, promote your brand, educate people about your products, and, and educate them to specify them safely, reach specifiers, um, to establish long-term relationships, um, and to gain specifications. We think CPD Providers Network is going to help you win with CPD. Thank you very much. Further information exclusive guidance is here. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Joni, and thank you, Robin, for inviting me to join your webinar. I'm Andy Civil. I am the uh, I run a marketing communications agency called Working Titles, and I also edit the R the RIBA CPD Showcase. Uh, and I guess it would be fair to say that I represent the outsiders insiders view um, of CPD. I'm neither a manufacturer nor a specifier nor for that matter an employee of either MBS or the RIBA, but I do communicate with all of those groups on a regular basis. What do I do? My company writes and edits copy. Um, we basically produce websites, magazine articles, case studies, newsletters, magazines, email campaigns, and yes, CPD presentations as well. Um, we tend to work for medium and large organizations with clear marketing objectives. And our client list includes city and district councils, the tech corridor surrounding Cambridge, which is where we're based, uh, and construction product manufacturers. And of course, the RIBA, with whom we've been proud to work for more than 10 years. In fact, I have personally compiled and edited every single issue of the RIBA CPD showcase, including this one here on the right, which was the very first issue 11 years ago, spring 2009, when it was, wasn't called the RIBA CPD showcase. What is the RIBA CPD Showcase? Very briefly, it's an email bulletin. It's compiled by me, yes, but it's very much published by the RIBA. It links, it, it features a selection of um, CPD providers, approved and assessed CPD providers, and it links back to rebacpd.com, uh, where, as Joni's pointed out, there are at least another 1,500 other marketing material, another CPD materials available um, to you to see. Um, so it's a it's a, a signpost and it works very effectively. I'm probably here because I am most definitely a flag waver for the benefits of CBD marketing. Um, evangelical is a word that's been used before now. And the reason why I am uh, so in favour of CBD is because I've seen it work. Um, Joni mentioned the the statistic earlier about 60% of specifiers having specified something as a result of seeing a CPD um, seminar. I can well believe that. It makes perfect sense that it would work. Why? Because we're naturally drawn to people and organizations that we trust. And what better way to build trust than to demonstrate competence and superior knowledge of a subject? We've all encountered someone who's naturally passionate about a subject about which you perhaps know nothing or even care less, but who managed nevertheless to, to arouse your interest through their sheer enthusiasm and insight. But we all know someone who's our go-to guy or gal to fix the printer or ask about buying a car or for advice on losing weight, because that's their thing. It's the person that we go to. They've already demonstrated that they know more about it than we do, and so we trust them. And that is CPD marketing in a nutshell. That's a fairly visceral way of looking at it. We want to know what role CPD can and should play in your marketing strategy. So let's introduce a little marketing discipline and translate what I've just said. CPD marketing supports brand messaging. If you want to be thought of as a thought leader, if you want to be seen not just as an expert, but the expert in your field, you can be as specialist as you like. In fact, the more detailed and the more specialist your knowledge, the better. You can do that through CPD marketing. Standing up in front of a room and sharing your knowledge doesn't detract from your knowledge at all, but certainly demonstrates your credentials. And of course, the RIBA, as Jenny's pointed out, go to great lengths to ensure that when you're standing up there, you're not selling, but you are selling. Well, more of that in a second but you're selling properly. You're selling your specialist knowledge about a subject. 
It goes further than that. If you want to discreet, discreetly explore your target market's reaction to a new product or service, using the Q&A sessions at the end of your presentation, for example, or if you want to turn the tables and ask what features uh, in a new product that you're, or service that you're considering, you can do that in the Q&A session. That's all a part of your marketing strategy. When you're sharing, others are more likely to share back. When you're selling, others are more likely to hold back. So CPD supports brand messaging, but as I said before, it also supports sales messaging, which, which we didn't talk about here. I've often argued that CPD marketing actually affords the opportunity to sell properly. Proper selling is not hounding. It's not broadcasting and it's not asking a thousand indiscriminate prospects to buy based on the statistical probability that 10 of them may say yes. It, nor is it about asking specifiers to commit before their project timeline allows them to commit. Proper selling is about having a conversation or a dialogue or, as a, or engaging as we marketing lovies like to call it. Either way, it's a two-way process. John Cleese, the um, Monty Python character, used to part own a company that produced sales training videos. And uh, back in a former life, uh, I was trained as a salesperson using those videos. They're very good, very, very funny, more than a touch of Basil Fawlty about them. And he, in those videos, he'd play various awkward customers or more usually the rather clueless salesperson trying to get the sale. And I remember, first of all, getting a great deal from those videos. Secondly, I remember reading an interview subsequently in which he said that as a result of that experience, he enjoyed being sold too well. I enjoy being sold too well, and I imagine that Mr. Cleese and I are far from unique, because if you're being sold too well, you're dealing with someone who's listening as much as they are talking, listening more than they're talking quite often. But when they're talking, you want to be reassured that they know what they're talking about. And a good way of doing that is to tell you something you don't already know, and that's really useful to you. Because in CPD marketing, you're adopting a consultative approach, you can ask questions. You can find out about staff changes within the client organization. You can ask about your client's priorities. You can ask about their project timelines, their attitudes towards your competitors, supply difficulties, pricing concerns. The list of things you can ask about is endless. From time to time, I encounter providers and wannabe providers who think that CPD marketing is pure selling. It isn't pure selling, but it perhaps is selling in its purest form. And I'm going to re-emphasize what Joni said earlier. As the editor of the RIBA CPD showcase, we remove brand references. We follow the guidelines because we know that it doesn't add anything to the mix. Follow the RIBA's guidelines and you're actually selling your services properly. I'd like to talk now about some ways in which you can promote your CPD. Uh, the RIBA offers a number of channels. Uh, the RIBA CPD Showcase is just one of those. There are roadshows, normally. Um, there are workshops, trade shows, uh, networking events. Of course, there's the RIBA CPD.com, which is promoted extensively. I like to focus perhaps a little less on where than on how. If you take anything, if you take nothing else, I should say, from this section, please note this one simple message. When promoting your CPD, keep it simple. I work across a lot of industries and in common with a great many content providers, I often rely on cloud-based services to support my clients. So I was interested when a year or two back, I received a mailer about a cloud-based service provider show being held in London. It was a trade show. I'll dish the dirt. It was Cloud Expo. What the show promised was right up my street, a chance to learn about new technologies and new product products and services that would make my life easier and help me better serve my customer base. So I went to it. And when I arrived, I'm common with most people who attend a trade show, I got a, got a copy of the show brochure, which with hindsight, I think I should probably have done before going. And I did what most people do. I scanned the exhibitors list to see whose stands I might like to visit. And each exhibitor had 60 to 100 words to summarize who they were and what they did, which incidentally is just like the RIBA CPD showcase. Now, I'm a reasonably intelligent guy, but I couldn't figure out from their own descriptions what half of these companies did. 
they were so busy trying to convince me that they were clever and operating at the cutting edge of their industry that they forgot one of the first principles of running a business. Keep it simple. Solve a problem. If I can't understand how what you do helps me, why should I bother listening? So when it comes to promoting your CPD, describe it in clear and simple terms, as you might do to someone you've just met. Not because your audience is stupid, but because they're busy. It doesn't have to be keyword dense, by the way. I do encounter from time to time descriptions that they really try and pack in all those keywords. But I should point out to you that the MBS team does a pretty pretty brilliant job, quite frankly, of optimizing all content. They optimize it against CISFB codes. They optimize it against the core curriculum subjects. They cross-reference it. It's, it's pretty impressive. So you don't need to pack everything, including the kitchen sink in there, unless you are actually selling kitchen sinks. The other thing is make your title descriptive. Busy people want to the cut to the chase. And fair dues, they're here on the right, there are some examples. I didn't have to go hunting for these. These are taken from rabacbd.com. They're on the front page or on the first page of the this month's CPD showcase. But you can see that they spell out exactly what they do on the tin. In your body copy, remember that less is often more. Is it clear? Is it descriptive? Does it get the point across? Yes, good, job done. Solve the problem. Also, talk about what gets you excited. I love talking to Reba CPD Providers Network members. They're such an interesting bunch. If they can inject a modicum, just a tiny bit of that enthusiasm into their materials, they're flying. I went to see, I'm working currently with uh, uh, a company that produces renders and, ins and uh, insulation. Um, and they knew that their materials were old and a little bit tired and uh, were working together on, on, on reviewing them. And I sat down and I read their materials and I talked to them. And it was only 10 minutes into the meeting that I realized that they actually operate one of the largest research facilities in Europe measuring insulation and uh, rendering. It's amazing what they're doing. It's astonishing. It's cutting edge. Absolutely brilliant. And when we started talking about it, they were hopping from one foot to the other, talking to me about it as well. Um, Jacaranda Carpets and Rugs um, invited uh, us to come in and talk to them about CPD presentation. And I thought, and they produce, sorry, they produce handmade carpets and rugs in India and Tibet. So before going there, I'm thinking, oh, good Lord, we've got an ethical issue here. How am I going to square this one with our ethics? Not a bit of it. They work with Goodweave to eradicate child po poverty in India and Tibet. They are at the cutting edge of corporate responsibility. And they produce stunningly luxurious deep pile handwoven carpets from material that starts life as bark chippings. These are really good stories. These are the sorts of things that you want to be sharing. These are the things that will get people's interest. Also want to have a quick word about pictures. Joni mentioned it. Joni mentioned a very good one with Delta Membranes. Here's another very good one. Pictures should play a key part in promoting your offering, especially in CPD marketing. There's always a slight temptation to show your product or service in its very best light. And who can blame you for that? So you want to show the finished article. You want to show the, the, the glossy kitchen, the glossy basement. But in the case specifically of CPD marketing, that doesn't always help. You want to flag what the problem is that you're here to solve, because that actually acts as a shorthand code for the people looking for CPD. A very good example of this I saw quite some time ago. It was, um, it was a provider who, when pushed to provide pictures, they, they, they've been a bit sort of uh, hesitant in providing pictures, eventually, eventually sent us through some which showed a rather muddy waterlogged hole in the ground and they were basement renovation specialists, but actually it couldn't have been a better picture. Boy, did it summarize what they go in to fix. It was brilliant, absolutely perfect. Flood Control International, this example here is another, is another good example. This summarizes exactly what they do and the benefits that they provide. There's not so much as a puddle of water on the far side of that barrier. Good, relevant, appropriate, insightful pictures are worth more than a thousand words, and that's from someone who writes words for a living. Before I close this section, I'd like to address some basic housekeeping issues. 
And this is very much drawing on my role as editor of the RIBA CPD Showcase. CPD marketing is no different from marketing. One size does not fit all, nor need it. The RIBA offers a variety of channels for you to promote your CPD. Some, like Showcase, address architects specifically, but the RIBACPD.com can be accessed by anyone, and it is. It's an important market for CPD, sorry, an important market for CPD is contractors, for example. So adapt your CPD description based on who you're talking to at that particular time or what the channel is. And there are multiple channels available to you through the RIBA. There's no need for a wholesale rewrite. Just consider changing the emphasis to fit the role and priorities of each group. Remember, also, you have up to five assessments, 10 if you if you replicate your, your presentation online. It's very easy to tweak materials and have them reassessed for a different market. It's very important indeed that you keep your materials up to date and in line with building regulations. If you reference a building regulation that's been superseded, it dates your presentation instantly. So why should people continue listening? And finally, make sure your email address and contact details are up to date. It's basic, but it does happen. I'd like to end with two stories. They're not scientific, they're not really case studies because they both describe the experience of other people relay to me secondhand. Both were told to me some time ago, six or seven years ago, in fact, but they really impressed me at the time and they embodied a message I've never heard contradicted since. The first concerns a brick manufacturer who wasn't incidentally a Reba CPD provider, but we'll forgive him that, and a group of architects in Saffron Walden. Now Saffron Walden, is a market town just south of Cambridge, in case you don't know, it's very picturesque. Here's a picture of it. The town centre is dominated by old buildings, um, many of which are very beautifully and have been restored and maintained very sympathetically. Uh, Saffron Walden, it would be fair to say, is, is a magnet for architects. There are dozens of them, um, which helped me in the early days of, uh, of my editing showcase, because I went and talked to them all about what they got out of CPD. And there are many small practices there, and renovations and sympathetic extensions are their bread and butter. And I found that they used to band together to book CPD seminars. Um, so they'd all band together, they'd get someone in, they'd all sit in the same room, uh, they'd listen to one or more presentations, then they'd have lunch and then they'd all go back to their respective practices. And one day they invited a brick manufacturer, apparently. And he came and he delivered his PowerPoint presentation. Um, which the architect who told me this story described as forgettable. And then he opened the floor to questions. And this being an area dominated by renovation projects where matching brick types is a priority, he was bombarded with very specific, very detailed inquiries. And he did his best to answer them for five minutes. And then he did something truly inspired. He suggested that they all go for a walk. So they all put on their anoraks and they marched out into the sunlight and for the next hour, they toured Saffron Walden on foot with a brick manufacturer pointing out old buildings and describing their brickwork. He described the types of bricks used, how they were manufactured, when and where they might fail, whether there were modern equivalents available. The architect who told me the story said that it was the most informative presentation he'd ever witnessed. Now you tell me, how many of those architects do you think would have stayed in touch with that brick manufacturer and used them on their next project? Second story concerns a washroom manufacturer. This one pitched up and delivered his presentation on commercial washrooms and facilities before, uh, like the brick manufacturer, opening up the floor to questions. And apparently there was a wheelchair user in the audience and he challenged the manufacturer on a number of issues concerning accessibility. And I should point out here, this was quite a few years ago. This was before more recent legislation on accessibility. The long and the short of it was that they all ended up, the entire seminar group ended up squeezed into the office bathroom. And while there, the wheelchair user, by simply wheeling his chair around, opening doors, closing doors, going across thresholds, using the taps, showed how incredibly awkward it was for him to use the facilities. And fair play to the washroom manufacturer. He listened carefully and he took notes. And by the time the meeting ended, he was seen thanking the wheelchair user profusely, and the wheelchair user was thanking him for listening. That, to my mind, was the very definition of a win-win scenario, and it came about as a natural consequence 
of CPD marketing. Before I wrap up, I'd like to point out what I'm sure has already occurred to many of you. Robin, Joni, and at the risk of sounding modest, I have in common that we have years of experience in our respective fields, and we enjoy sharing what we know. Hopefully it's been of value to you and it's helped solve a problem. That is CPD marketing. Thank you. Great, uh, Andy and Joni, thank you so much for those um, those uh, very insightful presentations. Loads of detail there, and um, and both the kind of the practical side of things and the uh, the logistical side of things in terms of of how the process works, as well as some real insights and stories there. So, very very useful for any manufacturers looking to get started with specification. Just before we wrap up, I'm just going to cover a couple of final points. We um, we talked earlier about how CPD forms part of that um, digital marketing mix for manufacturers, and I think you've really seen there how it's a completely unique channel, unlike any others. And um, at MBS, we obviously link that in with everything that we do across the full specification uh, uh, process, so that CPD becomes part of that link between um, speaking with specifiers and actually getting the product into the specification. So I just wanted to share a couple of final points on that to wrap up, really. So as well as CPD, um, we recommend that manufacturers are providing that digital product data and making their products available through specification tools and platforms. So if you haven't seen it, our new product data platform is NBS Source, which uh, has got thousands of products and manufacturers contained within it and allows manufacturers to push their information out across all stages of the, the project timeline, really. So many of those manufacturers in there provide CPD as well and then are able to in integrate that with their digital product information and their specification information, which really gives those specifiers, as I mentioned earlier, the content they need and the information to find your products and your, and your company, whether they're in a project or outside of a project conducting their learning. And alongside that, we're seeing significant growth in our, um, our use of our cloud specification platform, which is NBS Chorus. And not only that, we now have the capacity in there for manufacturers and specifiers to collaborate together on specifications. We've got a really great case study on our website of um, Dulux Trade, uh, working with Franklin Ellis Architects to, to write the specification for a, a particular job um, and making sure their products ended up in the final the final spec. Now, there's a there's a link in here with with CPD as well, because obviously CPD is at the kind of front end of, of educating the market about your products. And this is where you ultimately want to end up, which is getting into the specification it, itself. So providing that full degree of exposure gives you the best possible chance of, of doing that. Um, and as I said, raise your profile, reach more specifiers, get in the model, get in the spec from CPD all the way across product information. So the final point, and we've, we've touched on a bit of this already, um, just in terms of measuring the ROI of CPD, obviously every marketing channel is is under scrutiny and, and you want to understand what return you're getting on that investment and where you've got other platforms like Google AdWords and others where it's very easy to to, to measure ROI. Obviously CPD is a, is a different type of medium, but I want to share a couple of things that um, that give you some insight as to as to just how um, how beneficial it is. So Joni shared a couple of quotes earlier, and uh, Andy obviously gave some some stories. This is a, a very recent one from uh, ICB Waterproofing, who are a customer, um, explaining, and this is in, in the post-COVID era as well, um, so to, to highlight just how current things are. Uh, online seminars generating reach for over a thousand participants from all over the country, which could not have been possible uh, previously. So if you think um, CPD is is less relevant because of the restrictions, that's absolutely not true. Um, we've got the practical evidence of that there as well. And the final point, again, Joni alluded to this earlier. This is from our. Uh, um, I've given you a, a um, uh, an anecdotal quote there, but this is this is hard data based on a survey we conducted last year around CPD. And this is from um, the data that you see there is from uh, architects and consumers of CPD. So when we spoke to those, they told us 73% of them told them told us that after watching a CPD or, or partaking in a CPD, they'd gone on to ask for more information about a manufacturer's product. And 58% said that they'd gone on to actually specify a product. So there is a there is a huge influence there, and they might not specify it today or tomorrow, but the, the, the whole point is that you're building that trust and that exposure and you're selling to them in the right way. 
And then if you're backing that up with specification tools and, and quality product information, that means that you're there when they actually need you with the, with the data that they need to add you to their projects. So just in summary, before we, we end, um, high quality CPD is more important than ever. I think we've, we've thoroughly in, illustrated that point. And although things have changed within the market, um, there are new and interesting ways to be able to, to deliver that. Uh, second point, solve the problem. So specifiers and, and CPD consumers are looking for you to help them with their problems and uh, achieving the things that they need to with their projects. So thinking about it in that context will make a huge difference. And the final point is to make sure you're integrating CPD with that other digital marketing activity and channels to make sure you're giving people everything they need at the, at the right moment in time through the right, the right medium. So just remains for me to say uh, thank you very much for attending. Thank you to Joni and Andy for uh, being co-presenters. Um, please do uh, visit our website to find out more. We've got many more webinars and uh, many more um, useful pieces of information about CPD and our, and our other services. So uh, that's the end of the session. Thanks very much for joining us. See you next time.